So this is the way we're going to run this presentation, the introduction, history and background to it, just to give you a bit of, bit of local colour really, um, 10,000 field overview, which Leo has actually excellently done, definitions and the key points. Um, then we're going to go over the uh, part two with, with Mark later on after lunch and it's going to go over these bits and pieces and we've tried to sort of make it more practical so you can see what you, what you can actually do. This is kind of interesting and absolutely nothing to do with GDPR. Uh, this is, um, you have to keep the interest with this stuff. So, uh, 2016, your biggest talk is in Washington DC on the lecture circuit. Very interestingly enough, it was this guy, uh, Donald J. Trump, you might have heard of him. Um, 1.5 million earnings from his little talks. Ben Bernanke, Federal Reserve Chairman, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton. I would have thought they'd be worth a bit more somehow. Um, that's interesting. Not very much. She's still around. Um, you might have heard of Sarah Palin. I'd kind of avoid that personally, but there we go. Chelsea Clinton, interesting. But we guys, we here, we do it here for free. <laughs> um, the presentation is introducing, so new perspectives on the GDPR regulation. Um, it's going to, uh, I think we put this in our blurb, we're going to benefit those interested in understanding the impact of GDPR on your organisation and the ways in which the fundamental changes in the operating may be addressed. And we'd like to say that obviously I've put this together and it's basically my own personal view, blah, 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 and um, obviously anything we say you should get checked out and, and take further yourselves. Okay, what I've done sort of for convenience is I've actually highlighted the key points, so you can, if you're, if you're glazing over and we're all talking, you can actually just read the yellow bits and it kind of makes it really easy. So 99 articles in the legislation and it is seriously confusing. Um, the point of this presentation is we're not going to go over the whole thing because we simply couldn't do it in, in the time that we've got. But to focus on this, this particular point, the, the security of personal data, which is the most important part, which falls under the most severe set of proposed fines that you've already heard about. Okay, let's have some history. So, um, Leo touched upon this. A lot has changed since 1995. Um, data Protection Act, um, for example, mobile devices you, are ubiquitous, they're everywhere. Sensitive company data is moving outside the safety of the traditional corporate security perimeter. I was going to say parameter. Employee, employees email documents to themselves, access data from personal smartphones and tablets, and store data in the cloud. And that's another subject for another day. Why are the changes needed? Basically, um, the EU has decided that we want to amalgamate and simplify um, everyone's different data protection laws. Um, because basically all our 26 or 28 member states, soon to be 27 I guess, um, all have different laws and we all have to basically put them all together. It's a bit like the US federal system. We're going to uh, now go over a, a basically a very high level overview. So again Leo touched upon this. Um, GDPR is all about, it's a completely different way of looking at um, the law. It's all about the rights of the individual and the accountability of organisations. New GDPR regulation applies to most entities that process EU data subjects' personal information. Effective 25th of May 2018, Leo's son's birthday, and a date that will, um, you know, stick in your minds. It's not many, many days away. Uh, no escape from this, Brexit or not, it makes no difference. It's coming one way or another. In fact, it's already here. It concerns any data by which an EU citizen can be identified. Users have rights and can make claims, and we're concerned with natural persons who are living individuals. Leo touched upon this as well. So there are very, very substantial penalties for failure to meet this or, or, or to be seen to. Stipulations that controllers and processors of personal data should act lawfully, fairly, and transparently in their use of personal data, and how they deal with the people to whom the data relates. Businesses will have a number of additional responsibilities that they need to honour if they are to remain compliant and within the law. That is the price of bad parking. Just to bear in mind that the price of breach of DDPR would be considerably higher than that. Um, okay, so we're going to go over some of the um, definitions because basically it's full of all sorts of wonderful definitions and words. We need to sort of go over them, otherwise you're going to get a bit lost when we start talking about it. 
So subject matter from Article 1, natural persons, this is different from the Data Protection Act, so natural persons who have rights associated with protection of personal data, the protection and the processing of personal data and the unrestricted movement of personal data within the EU. Material scope. Personal data that is processed wholly or partly by automated means. Personal data that's part of a filing system. As Leo said, it can be a cards, Rolodex on your desk, or intended to be part of a filing system. Out of material scope, um, activity outside of EU law, uh, personal data such as border checks, asylum, immigration status, that sort of stuff. Personal data used in relation to a purely personal activity, and personal data used for the purpose of crime prevention, etc. etc. Territorial scope. Regulation applies to controllers and processors in the EU, irrespective of where processing takes place. It applies to processing activities that are related to goods or services, irrespective of whether payment is required, or the monitoring of data subjects' behaviour within the EU. It applies to controllers not in the EU, but where member state law applies. More definitions. Data controller or controller. The, per the natural or legal person, public authority, agency or other body which, alone or jointly with others, you see it's very good drafting, determines the purposes and means of the processing of personal data. Processor, the natural or legal person, public authority, agency or other body which processes personal data on behalf of the controller. Consent of the data subject means any freely given specific, informed and unambiguous indication of a data subject's wishes by which he or she, by a statement or, uh, or by clear affirmative action, signifies agreement to that processing. And more definitions, because you, need, you know you want to see these. Personal data. Now this is quite critical. Any information relating to an unidentified or identifiable natural person, so that's the data subject. An identifiable natural person is one who can be identified directly or indirectly, and that's very key. Uh, in particular, by reference to an identifier such as a name, an identification number, location data, an online identifier or, or one or more factors subject to physical, physiological, genetic, mental, economic, cultural or social identity of that natural person. Mark will be covering this a little bit more in detail um, in his, but it also includes some, some really wonderful things that you need to be aware of. Processing means any operation or set of operations which is performed on personal data or on sets of personal data whether or not by automated means, such as, obviously this is key, collection, recording, organisation, structuring, storage, adaptation, alteration, retrieval, consultation, use, disclosure by transmission, dissemination, or otherwise making available. And I'll tell you what, I need some water after all that, but you see, it's very, very comprehensive. So, what are the key points? Obviously, we've, we've touched upon this as well. Increased enforcement powers. The fines for breaches of the old Data Protection Act were currently limited to a mere £500,000. Via the GDPR, fines will be increased to £10 million or 2% of the annual turnover or 4% of the annual turnover, depending on the nature of the breach. Now, Leo also touched upon this. It doesn't mean that you guys are going to be, you know, should, you, should there be a breach, you guys are going to be taken to the cleaners and, and, and run out of business. It, the, these are very severe, and they're going to be very severe for big organisations such as your Googles, your Amazons, your uh, those sort of people if they breach it. But you, you know, basically, it's not going to be the case for everybody. Consent now, much, much harder to obtain. Consent is one of the various conditions by which it can be relied upon for processing, and the GDPR will require a much higher standard of consent. There needs to be clear affirmative action demonstrating a freely given, specific, informed and unambiguous consent. Again, um, Leo touched upon this very excellently in his, uh, um, when he was discussing mail shots and can you opt into this bit but not that bit. It's got to be very, very crystal clear. The burden of proof establishing this will be on the data controller. That's you guys. GDPR has a risk-based approach to compliance. Organisations that will bear responsibility for assessing the degree of risk that their processing activities pose. So again, you guys, when you're processing, you're going to think, 
what's how can we how can we um, reduce risk and what do we need to do? Does anyone recognise that? Very old album. I'm obviously showing my age. Clearly, I'm showing my age. That's an old album from a group called um, ABC. Uh, I'm talking like oh, 30 years ago, would you? Know? Yeah. Um, and the person who drafted the legislation must have had this in mind because on side B there's a song um, by default, by design, and surprise, surprise, privacy is now included in GDPR by design and default. And that's really, really odd. So having regard to the state of the art and the cost of implementation, scope, context of processings, organisations will be required to implement data protection by design and by default at the time of processing. Okay, so you will need to apply, appoint a data protection officer. That's if you're basically a large corporate. You guys will not really have to do that, but you will have to appoint someone who has the responsibility to do these sort of tasks. So it won't necessarily be called a data protection officer, but they'll have the data protection officer um, responsibility. New breach notification rules are, are, are very, very changed now. Breaches will have to be notified to the, to the ICO within 72 hours. Uh, where feasible unless the breach is unlikely to result in a risk to individuals. Where a high risk to individuals arises, they will also have to be notified unless an exception arises. Okay, so we touched upon this as well. Individuals now have the right to be forgotten, a right to object to profi data profiling, and a right to data portability. That means moving data from one organisation to another. There is less time for subject access requests. So the time limit for processing a subject access request will be reduced from 40 days to one month. Um, I don't know if any of you guys deal with freedom of information requests, most likely probably not, but basically they have to be answered in a certain amount of time. Subject access request is the same sort of thing, but it's, it's a much shorter time scale to get, to get that um, compliant and answered. Privacy Impact Assessment, PIA. Organisations will be required to carry out PIAs before introducing processing by new technologies likely to pose a risk to data privacy and in other circumstances to be specified. Mandatory consultation with the ICO may be required in certain circumstances. So again, Mark's going to touch upon this later, but your PIA is, is, is how you're going to basically figure out what we've got, who's got access to it and how we do it. A part of the PIA is the ROPA, the ROPA. So organisations will need to maintain detailed documentation recording their data processing activities. Again, more upon this later, but it's basically who has access to it and what do they do with it. Now we shall touch upon the wonderful um, articles inside GDPR and we'll go over the principles therein. So, Personal data shall be processed lawfully, fairly, and in a transparent manner in relation to the data subject. So that's lawfulness, fairness, and transparency. Um, second principle, personal data should be collected for specific, specified, explicit, and legitimate purposes, and not further processed in a manner that is incompatible with those purposes. So that limits the pur uh, purpose limitation. Data minimization. So personal data should be adequate, relevant and limited to what is necessary in relation to the processes for which they are processed. Fourth principle, accuracy. Personal data shall be accurate and where necessary, kept up to date. Every reasonable step must be taken to ensure that personal data that is, that is inaccurate, having regards to the purposes for which they are processed, are erased or rectified without delay. So that's actually quite interesting. So you hold personal data, you guys actually need to make sure it's up to date and it's relevant. Personal data should be kept in a form which permits identification of data subjects for no longer than is necessary for the purposes for which the personal data are processed. Personal data should be processed in a manner that ensures appropriate security of the personal data, including protection against unauthorized or unlawful processing, and against accidental loss, destruction or damage using appropriate technical and organisational measures. So again, we'll be, uh, Mark will be touching upon this and he's part of the presentation, but this, this, this part is quite key. Okay, Article 5.2. The controller shall be responsible for and be able to demonstrate compliance with Article 5.1, which is accountability. So 
This part concerns transfer of data to third party countries, which are those not necessarily um, in the EU. Any such transfer where the personal data is undergoing processing or intended for processing after transfer to a third country or international organisation shall take place only if, subject to the other provisions of GDPR, the conditions laid down in Chapter 5, transfers are complied with by the controller and, where necessary, by the processor. We are thinking, what's the relevance of this? This could very be, much be relevant where you use um, cloud-based systems that wouldn't necessarily be based in the EU. The meaning of personal data. Personal data, that's not going to Personal data means any information relating to an identified or identifiable natural person. Um, natural is basically a living person. Data subject, an identifiable natural person is one who can be directly or indirectly identified from the data, in particular by reference to an identifier such as, so we have name, an identification number of some sort, location data, online identifier, or more factors including physical, physiological, genetic, mental, economic, cultural or social. And again, Mark will be touching upon this in detail when uh, we come to this part of the presentation. So, um, we were talking about the Data Protection Act. Um, this is, so that has a different definition. So personal data for the DPA is data relating to a living individual who can be identified from that data or from the data and other information. So it's slightly, it's slightly different, it's moved on. Fair and lawful processing. So we touched, uh, Leo touched upon this in his um, talk. Article 6.1. Processing of personal data is only lawful if the data subject is given consent for the specific purpose or purposes or it is necessary for the performance of a contract with the data subject or necessary for compliance legally or necessary to protect the vital interests of the data subject. This one is the most relevant part to you guys. Consent must be very, very clear. Or uh, necessary, we can also say we're necessary for the performance of a task carried out in the public interest in the exercise of an official authority vested in the data controller. I wouldn't think that would necessarily cover um, your sort of actions. Or necessary for the purposes of legitimate interest pursued by the controller or third party, if set by overridden by the interests of fundamental rights and freedoms of a data subject, which require protection, in particular where the data subject is a child. More of that later. Definition of consent, Article 7. Unambiguous and expressed by a statement or by a clear affirmative action. Again, um, Leo touched upon this, and this is absolutely critical to the whole thing. Withdrawal should be as easy as giving consent, um, and parental consent from parent or guardian is required for processing information of children in relation to the offer of information society services directly to the child. Fair processing notices. Um, this is, again, this has been expanded from the old Data Protection Act um, uh, definitions. There's an emphasis on making fair processing privacy notices understandable and accessible. GDPR requires information provided to data subjects on the processing of their personal data to be concise, transparent, intelligible, and easy accessi easily accessible, and written in clear and plain language, particularly if addressed to a child and free of charge. Um, the ICO website, which is actually very, very good, um, gives really good examples of good and bad privacy notices. Special personal data. So this is actually quite sensitive stuff, um, and you know, in our, in my, well, my personal view is it should be assiduously avoided if possible. However, there may be situations where you would need this. So, um, under the under the category of special personal data is the racial and ethnic origin of a data subject, their political opinions, their religious or philosophical beliefs, whether they're a member of a trade union, the processing of genetic data, which I wouldn't think you would be doing, the processing of biometric data in order to uniquely identify a person, their health or their sexual life and sexual orientation <coughs> should not be processed unless in compliance with very specific conditions. Exceptions for special categories of data. Explicit consent for a specified purpose unless covered by EU law, 
Necessary for employment or social security obligations or rights, because it probably would be. Necessary for vital interests where, the where a person cannot give consent. Not for profit, political, philosophical bodies with no disclosure outside. Now I would be careful with that one, as um, we this hasn't been tested yet, so we want to make sure that you we don't have to like cause any legal cases where there could be an issue. Um, personal data manifestly made public by the data subject, so if it's already out there, it's probably not an issue. Uh, and that which is necessary to specify state functions, medical purposes, or legal proceedings and quality. Right of access. Um, so you remember we touched upon the fact that individuals now have a right of access to their own their own personal data, and that this has been um, already existing in the DPA. So we Article 15. We confirm as to whether or not personal data is being processed and subject to exemptions provide access, which is copies of the data itself. Also, we must confirm the purpose and legal basis for the reason that you're processing it, the categories of personal data covered, the recipients to whom the personal data has or will be disclosed, and that could be absolutely huge. Think about emails um, or any overseas transfers made of that data, the retention period, uh, that might be very impossible to prove, but you should at least try. Um, data subject rights in relation to the processing of the personal data. Existence of automated decision-making processes of profiling. Um, and may be restricted where proportionate and necessary. So, for example, again, we touch upon the crime thing and security, security issues. Right of access. So, <laughs> this is absolutely fundamental. Right of access is now to be free of charge. Um, but fees can be charged where additional copies are requested, or where the request is manifestly unfounded, or, or not of, excessive, or you can simply refuse. So um, I actually think this will cause a huge increase in the amount of SIRs that are received by organisations. Um, access requests to be complete are to be completed without undue delay, and in any event, within one month of the receipt of the request by providing the information or explaining why you cannot provide the information. Where the request is made electronically, information must be provided in a commonly used electronic form, which is fine. Where the controller possesses a large quantity of information concerning the data subject, the controller can request that the data subject specifies information or processing activities to which the request relates. Um, and we must focus upon the specificity of the request, not the extent of time and effort on the part of the controller to comply, though these may be linked. Individual rights, again very relevant. Article 16, the right to rectification. So you realise that individuals have a right to ask about the data that you've got on them and they can ask for that to be rectified or changed. Article 21, the right to object to data processing. There is a right to object to processing based on Article 6E and F at any time, but the controller is still allowed to process the data in limited circumstances. That's highlighted for a reason. So there is a right, um, there is a right for the individual to object to processing of data for direct marketing purposes. That's very key. Article 18, the right to restriction of processing. This limits processing other than just plain storage only to what is done with consent. Requires, it's required for legal claims and require, required to protect the rights of, of natural or legal persons or for reasons of public interest where the accuracy of data is challenged by the data subject and the controller is verifying the accuracy or processing is unlawful and the data subject opposes erasure and request restriction instead, or the controller no longer needs personal data for the purposes of processing, but requires for establishment, exercise, or defense of legal claims. More individual rights, Article 17. Um, the right to be forgotten, again, Leo touched upon this. Um, so basically, there, there is a new right to be forgotten for data subjects. Um, they can request that their personal data is erased in certain circumstances. Um, 
but not required erasure where it's necessary to process that information for a number of purposes, so you have to be very careful with that. Article 20, the right to have personal data transferred from one data controller to another, so that's portability. They have to specifically um, uh, consent to that. Or the right to have data transmitted directly between data controllers. This allows the data subject to receive from the data controller a copy of his or her personal data in a commonly used machine readable format. Okay, so new requirements from the legislation. Accountability. Um, basically, uh, users of data must demonstrate compliance with the data protection principles. Um, this requires a number of measures and these have to be demonstrated or shown. That you've minimised the processing of data. I can't pronounce that, but you pseudonymise the data, um, that you've maintained documentation about the data, um, that you've carried out data protection impact assessments, or PS, um, that you've shown transparency in processing the data, and that you've appointed, that if not a DPO, uh, someone who has the task of doing a DPO's job. Article 33, so uh, Mark's going to go over this in detail. Basically, if you've had a data breach, and, and hopefully you will never will, Article 33, you have a duty to notify the supervisory authority, i.e. the ICO, without undue delay. Where feasible, not later than 72 hours after having become aware of the breach. Where not notified within 72 hours, the notification should be accompanied by reasons for the delay. Article 33, um, states what you need to include in that notification. It can be phased, so if you're not actually not aware what's been breached, you can actually just notify them we think this is this, and then you can change that later. Um, you must document all elements of the breach and the remedial action taken. So it's not enough just to notify them that you've had a data breach, you've actually got to say what you've done to um, ameliorate that. Data processes. So, New firmware requirements on using data processors, uh, third parties to process personal data. Controllers are only to use data processors providing <coughs> sufficient guarantees regarding uh, appropriate technical and organisational measures in place relevant to the processing. So um, when we talk about um, software that you've downloaded on your smartphone or on your PC or on your Mac and you see that lovely end user licence agreement you really do need to be starting to read those, you need to be looking at where the data is going, where it's stored, this is all relevant now. It, it wasn't relevant before and it really is relevant now. Must have a contract in place detailing the subject, duration, nature and purpose of the processing and types of data, categories of data subjects and obligations of the controller processor and processors must now have direct <coughs> statutory obligations when processing on behalf of controllers. Accountability maintaining records, security breach notifications, and finally, they're subject to enforcement action, including fines. So basically, this is any, if you think about it, this is any system that you basically implement, um, and you need to be looking at the contractual um, uh, liabilities of those people so you know what they're doing with it. Right, let's see if you can still, let's see if you can still, uh, uh, if you're still awake, because I think I'm seeing some nodding at the end. So let's, GDPR has got lots and lots of acronyms, PIA, ROPA, we're going to cover that sort of stuff. Let's see if you can, um, this is completely non-GDPR, let's see if you can guess it, any, any of these. So, anyone know what that one is? You would have thought it was a bit, it was a bit more obvious. Okay, M&Ms? No? <coughs> Mars and Murray's. These are the guys. Mars, you would have heard of. That one is a really good one. Does anyone know what? You know. Go on. Is it water displaced? Very good, Leo. <laughs> that is actually true. That's it. We've literally gone through it. Um, at least now you've actually seen it and you've seen how tedious it is, but it, it has some very, very serious points.